This is History Explorer YouTube video number three, the installation manual. Uh, we're going to go into the Android and the web application tools used, the API, accessing the code, and modifying the code. The tools used for Android is Android Studio. You can see the directory of the Android code within the GitHub repository. We use Putty to access the web service. GitHub, obviously, for the repository of documentations, uh, posters, presentations, and code, as well as a Google API key, which I'll sh give you a quick uh, view of how to access this, an Android device with developer options on, and enabling you speed debugging. So for the API key, you come here to the site. You're most likely going to have to log in and create an account. Uh, you go here to APIs, and as you can see, I currently have four APIs enabled under my account. So just make sure you enable these. Uh, you can either scroll down here and search by name, and once they act, once the one you want pops up, you click this off button, which then will turn it on. Here you can see what the quota is, the credentials. And you come here to public API access and create a new key. Go to Android key. Once you come here, this link will give you instructions of how to access your uh, certificate fingerprint. And then at the end, the .com example would be the name of the application, which is here. Once you get that, you copy and paste this API key, open up your Android Studios, and paste it here within the Android Manifesto. Your manifesto, add the API key, uh, and just build. To create the APK, you go here to build, generate APK key. This would point to the location of your AP of your keystone. Uh, currently, the one for this application is with this directory. You come here and type the password, which is history app, the original name of the application. Click next. And the build type would be debugging. Since the application hasn't been released out to the public and we're using Google Maps, if you use the release key, uh, APK, on your device, you will not be able to access the Google Maps. So currently, it only works for debug. Press build. Once that pops up, once, once your device builds, go into your directory and type ADV install adb slash debug.ptk and if you see this error um, after it installs you will most likely have to delete it um, from your device if you previously had it and then run the command again uh, all this information is available within the user guide as well as some pictures and screenshots of how to get there and where the directory is at now I'll show you how to install the web app, how to maintain it, and how to modify it for the next revision. Basically, the first step you want to do is make sure that you have LAMP running. You'll need LAMP for your database and your web services. Once you have that set up, you can go over to Node.js, download it, and install it. And then after that, you'd want to install Node Static. The reason that you want this is basically it allows you to have your local server right where you have your application. So the way that you would run it is you press shift, right click, open command window here, and then simply type static, press enter. It will reply with the address so that you can copy it, go to your browser, and have the application running. This will allow you to make changes on the spot. Now, to access the database using phpMyAdmin, you would go to the root of the site on your server, not locally, unless you have a uh, LAMP set up locally on your computer, and then slash admin. The credentials are root and history app all lowercase and no spaces and 
now you have access to modify the structure of the tables run queries everything database related now if we look at the file structure we see that we have views scripts images and then a bunch of uh, assets we also have this folder called rest this is where the web services will will live all of the web services are done in PHP so you have this connect database dot PHP file and basically it sets up it, it serves as the foundation for every other file or web service that we have for example this get all places service it does just that it gets all places but if you notice it uses connectdb.php as an inclusion and the reason for that is that you wouldn't want to write the database information everywhere at all times so we have examples for web service calls and setting up the web service also if we go back to the scripts you're gonna see this file called app.js given that the application is written in, MV in uh, Angular MVC this app.js file is probably one of the most important files in the whole application and what it does it it sets up the controllers that will modify and obtain the information that will be displayed in the actual pages all of the controllers are on this one file and then we go to view and we see the different views that we have basically this is directly related to the app.js file given that whatever is displayed in this pages will come directly from here